I'm now going to talk about distance in two- and three-dimensional Euclidean space. Let's start with the two-dimensional case. Suppose I have two points in the Euclidean plane, x1, y1, and x2, y2. So what is the distance between them? I'll denote this distance by dist of x1, y1, comma x2, y2. And the formula for this is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And why is that? Well, let's draw the picture. So here's the point x1, y1. Here's the point x2, y2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a right triangle. So I'm going to start at the point x1, y1. I'm going to move horizontally to the point x2, comma, y1. And then I can move vertically to the point x2, y2. So the length of this horizontal side of the triangle is x2 minus x1, and the length of this vertical side of the triangle is y2 minus y1. Here I've drawn the case where x2 is bigger than x1 and y2 is bigger than y1. There are some other cases where these inequalities are different. They behave similarly. Okay, and now the diagonal of this right triangle, the length of this is the distance that I care about. And so this distance formula is just the Pythagorean theorem for the triangle I just drew. Okay, now what's the generalization to three-dimensional space? So in three-dimensional space, the distance between two points, say x1, y1, z1, and x2, y2, z2, is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared plus z2 minus z1 squared. So why is this true? Well, let's draw a picture. So let me draw the axes. So when I draw axes for three-dimensional space, the one that looks horizontal is actually going to be y. x is sort of coming outwards, and z is going up. Okay, so here's the point x1, y1, z1. Here's the point x2, y2, z2. And I'm drawing the case where z2 is bigger than z1. The other cases are similar. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a right triangle I'm going to drop a perpendicular from the point x2, y2, z2 to the plane where z equals z1. So I'm going to end up at this point here, which is x2, y2, z1. So this point and the first point are on the plane where z equals z1. The length of this vertical segment is z2 minus z1. Now what about this horizontal segment that's on the plane z equals z1? Well, this is a Euclidean plane, so I can just ignore the z1 and think of this as the points x1 comma y1 and x2 comma y2 in the Euclidean plane. So the length of this segment via the two-dimensional distance formula is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And the diagonal, so this is a right triangle because this first line is vertical and this other line is horizontal. And then the diagonal, its length is the distance that we care about. And so this distance formula follows from the Pythagorean theorem because this distance is the square root of this squared, and that just makes the square root sign disappear because what's under it is positive, plus u2 minus u1 squared. So I get the formula up there. So this box formula follows from the Pythagorean theorem applied to this triangle. Now, there's a little warning here, which is that this is not a rigorous proof.
Why not? Well, I made all sorts of assumptions. For example, I assumed that a vertical line where only z changes is perpendicular to a horizontal line where z is constant. I also assumed that the Pythagorean theorem holds in three-dimensional space. How do I know these things? I don't. There's some axioms. There are different kinds of geometry with different axioms. In fact, it's sort of logically cleanest to take this box formula as the definition of distance, as an axiom defining three-dimensional geometry. So it's logically best to take the boxed formula, or the distance formula, as an axiom defining three-dimensional Euclidean geometry. Why am I making a fuss about this? Well, there are other non-Euclidean kinds of geometry. So let me show you an example of non-Euclidean geometry. And this is an example which is familiar from everyday life, especially if you travel by air. And this is two-dimensional spherical geometry. So here's the Earth. And to simplify the discussion, let's assume that it's a perfect sphere. And here's the North Pole. Now I can draw, and here's the equator down here. Now I can draw a straight line from the North Pole to a point on the equator. This doesn't look straight because I've embedded my sphere as a curved surface in three-dimensional space. But from the point of two-dimensional geometry, it's a straight line on the sphere. It's the shortest path between the two points on the sphere. And this makes a right angle with the equator. Now I can draw another straight line coming down from the North Pole, which makes a right angle to the first, and goes down to some other point on the equator. And this also makes a right angle with the equator. And then I can look at the segment of the equator between those two points. That's one quarter of the equator. And now I have a triangle. And in this triangle, the sum of the angles of the triangle is 3 pi over 2, which is bigger than pi. So that can never happen in Euclidean plane geometry, because in plane geometry, Euclidean plane geometry, the sum of the angles of any triangle is equal to pi. It turns out that on a sphere, the sum of the angles of any triangle is always bigger than pi, and moreover, the discrepancy between the sum of the angles and pi is proportional to the area of the triangle. So the bigger the triangle, the more the sum of the angles is going to be. That's a cool fact. So that's not going to be on the exam, but just keep in mind that there are different kinds of geometry. And in this course, the kind of geometry that we're going to study is Euclidean geometry, where the distance is given by this boxed formula. Note also that this has an obvious generalization to n-dimensional space. So in n-dimensional space, you could define the distance between two points to be the square root of the sum of the squares of the differences between their coordinates. And that leads to n-dimensional Euclidean space. But in this course, for ease of drawing pictures, we're going to cap the number of dimensions at three.